Today we're going to show you how we brew a French press, more or less. So, brewing a French press, right? Uh, we're going to start the brewing and then I'm going to walk you through exactly what we've done. So, first of all, coffee. Uh, we're doing medium ground on this coffee, basically very similar to when we're doing a cupping process here at April in general. 17 grams of coffee. We're pouring on water that is 96 degrees and we're going to pour a po total of 300 grams of water. I'm going to chunk it in pretty quickly here. So there's obviously different sizes of French press as well. We just basically took whatever we had in our shelf here. So 300 grams of water. I'm also going to give that a quick stir just to avoid any kind of lumps that, that might be in there. Take the spoon out. Pop up the top just to keep the temperature a bit higher. Uh, the specific French press that we're using now is what they call an Espro press. Um, it's one of the kind of newer models, even though it is a few years old now. And it's basically designed to give you a slightly cleaner version of the beverage. So the filter that we have is basically filtrating out more uh, of the fines, more of the coffee grounds, which unfortunately is actually causing you to filter out a bit more of the beverage as well, which you're gonna see in the bottom of the brewer if you use it afterwards. But just a few kind of tips and tricks on, on how we brew a French press. It's one of the most kind of beloved way of brewing coffee. In general, we would say it's something that a lot of people have at home and it's really easy to use and that's why we love it. So in our uh, reality, we're using always a one to 17 brew ratio, which is basically take the amount of water you're gonna pour on the coffee, divide that with 17, or take the amount of coffee you wanna use and multiply that with 17 and you get the volumes. It's relatively simple. It is what we refer to as a full immersion brew, which often gives you a sweeter coffee. It often creates beautiful flavor notes. One of the favorite features of this way of brewing is that we're not filtrating the coffee through a paper filter. Um, a paper filter, sure enough, makes a clean coffee, but sometimes it takes away a bit too much of the oil. And very often I can find that the best experience when it comes to tasting the coffee is actually an unfiltered version of it. Now naturally you always want to separate those coffee grounds from the actual liquid to make it a bit more pleasant, but it usually actually tastes better. In terms of grind size, what we're doing here is that we're going a bit finer than what we do on a V60 or, or any kind of drip versions like that. And on a Comandante, that would translate down to around 20 and 24 clicks, so quite a lot finer than what we're used to. Again, it's the same grind size that we use when we do cupping protocols um, here at April. Uh, so as you might notice, we're using a slightly higher water temperature than before, uh, up at 96 degrees, and this is just basically to get as much as we can out of that coffee. There's some people worrying that if the temperature is too high, uh, the coffee won't taste good. But in reality, there's no temperature that it really is too high for brewing coffee. Again, higher temperature brings out a bit more sweetness, a bit more body, lower temperature, a bit more acidity, a bit more vibrancy. Um, what we do here as well is that we factor in one, how fresh is the coffee. This coffee here is seven days old, which is the minimum amount of required days to wait from roast to make sure you have a clean cup of coffee, which we think is very important. Uh, we also have a brew time. Uh, we let this steep for basically four minutes. It's very straightforward. You chunk it on coffee, you pour in the water, give it a quick stir, and then we're waiting for four minutes. After four minutes, you get this really balanced, sweet, transparent cup of coffee. If you want something a bit stronger, I recommend to just use finer grind size, but keep the time. And if you want something a bit weaker, coarser grind size, but also just keep the time. What we want to avoid is to change too many different variables at the same time. So at four minutes here, I'm just going to press down really gently, again, to basically avoid that we have any coffee grounds going up as well, because we want this to be really, really clean, right? And that's gonna take about 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Um, and here we go, very easy. We have a really clean, simple, um, transparent liquid. It's gonna give you a really balanced, 
awesome tasting morning coffee. If you have any questions on this, um, and yes, you can translate this recipe to any kind of style of French press. It doesn't have to be the Espresso Press. If you have any questions, write them down here as usual. And uh, thank you all for watching.